Hello everyone, I'm Amari and welcome back to Disco Elysium. I seem to have gotten to the part with the dock workers leader, I I think, or or something. Um, so I feel like I'm I'm crossing off things on my to-do list, my long to-do list. I've gotten a few great tips, non-spoilery, so I just want to take this time to say thank you to everyone who has given me great advice and great tips on how to get the most out of this game without any spoilers, especially since I I don't know how it happened, but I accidentally turned off the tutorial early in the game when I was like fixing audio and all of the other game settings, so thank you guys. It's, it's a huge, huge help, and I'm super grateful that none of you have spoiled the game for me, so I get the best experience. Anyways, let's continue on and see what our detective uh, is going to do this time, because I know his first name is Harry? Harry? Henry? Harry? Oh god, I've forgotten. Harry? <laughs> now, but I don't know his last name, so we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Alright, let's go into the game. Okay, here we are. Uh, oh, I have to remember to do this when I get back into the whirling in rags. Uh, Renee. Oh, the guy doing the bowl, the bowls, balls, the man balls. Okay, we have a lot. Oh, this is too overwhelming. Let's just, let's just go in here. Wait. What? am I wearing? Minus suggestion. Okay, wait. Reaction speed, rhetoric. Shivers. Okay, I want the shivers. I want more shivers. I have a lot of shivers. Physical instrument, drama. Do I want to lie to this guy? Ooh, I want to know if he's lying to me. Minus authority. I think maybe I should take the drama. In case I need to lie. <laughs> that evens out. Reaction speed evens out. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna carry my plastic bag with me. Oh, minus one drama. Hmm. I want to be able to lie to this guy or have or know if he. That's what it does, right? I know if people are lying to me. And detect lies. Okay, yeah, that's what I want with this guy. Not like I expect him to lie to me, but what if he does? What does half light do again? Half light. Let the body take control. Threaten people. Oh yeah. Do I need to threaten him? Indirect modes of taxation. What does that mean? Affluent money maker man. Versus composure but minus savoir faire. I don't think I have to do any savoir faire. Savoir faire is sneak under the nose, stun with immense panache. The hell does that mean? Urges you to be better than you are, urges you to be disco. Tumble out of the back. Oh, it's acrobatic. I don't think I need to be acrobatic here. Why am I so focused on uh, my stats to talk to this guy? I don't know. I'm, I'm slightly terrified of him. I think. Okay, maybe I do need composure. I'm slightly scared of this man. Why? Keep your poker face. Hell yeah, that's what we need. Let's put my cute green boots. Okay. Why am I so scared of this guy? A taxidermy fish that tells time. It's a clock? It's a little clock on it. Oh man, he, I don't know why I'm so scared of this guy. Okay. Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. Gosh, he looks so friendly though. <laughs> Look at his face. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Oh no, he's doing the power move. Who talks first? With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Oh my gosh, he's doing the power move on me! Are you in charge of the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite his giant desk. He's so cute! I'm Everard, Everard Clare. 
head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. The man relaxes into his chair and continues. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He's so friendly he sounding. He looks extremely comfortable. The ah. tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. This guy's all about power you moves. Go ahead, detective. The lieutenant nods at you, then the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? Is that my name? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Is that my name? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. I think that's it's my name. Nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. Okay, power move. He's in a nice comfy chair. He let me talk first, and now he's telling me to take a seat. Do I take a seat? Yeah, why not? I'm gonna take Excellent, a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Try to wink back. So tell me, <laughs> how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable what? chair in the world. It's violating <laughs> your backside. <laughs> how did I take damage from sitting on this chair? Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. Oh my gosh, the bartender. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Can I Can I pay Kim back? Wow, that's 25 real. Oh. That's good money. You need it. Wait, you know Gart? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Oh. Oh, it's like you're in a game. At least don't think so. Um, I'm good? Either take the check and don't say anything because it's money, or be like, nah, but 25 real, I only have 25, I like money, take the comically large check, but don't say thank you. No, but it might work against us. Wait, look at him. He's definitely doing something here. Hmm, I can't tell whether, like, I don't know how to do these types of things, like manipulate people with money. I don't see anything wrong with taking this check, to be honest. I, I mean, if he asks anything for me, I could just say no. So take the comically large check, but don't say anything. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Just have or... money. No. Ah. Uh, no, it's cool. I've got integrity. Cool? I wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure, if that's what's cool nowadays. Wait, I can cash it with him? Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. <gasps> Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. How do you know? His slug-like lips move, but... All you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost. The world is swallowed by oh a black hole Oh my gosh. Of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Oh, damn it. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant be very worried. Uh, I'm not worried. I got this. Are you all right, Harry? <laughs> You say Harry. you've got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Absolutely not. Everything's going to be all right. Yep, I know. It's I not like you I left said it that. loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place, 
I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It's, is it, is it loaded? It was loaded. Oh. There were two bullets in it. it was. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. I took the check. The chair is killing me. Don't panic. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. Oh, you're oh, about God. to cry, aren't you? No. You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. No, they're not. So what? Men can cry too. You want to cry? God, you're weak. That's Whatever not weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. I'm not going to cry. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. Oh, God. I'm going to cry in front of Everard Claire. What ah. is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. God, what I'm suffering is in front of this man. You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. You need to chill. I regret sitting in this chair. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. <laughs> Keep sliding down the chair like a jello shot. <laughs> there are no Harrys. Let your mind go to your safe place. Um. Uh. Yeah, I'll slide down the chair like a jello shot. Mr. Dubois. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm Can fine. Can I get you a glass of water or something? I haven't had Are water in so long. Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's <laughs> Mr. Dubois. <laughs> huh. I don't know why this is so funny. Oh yeah, man. I'm fucking great and just keep sliding downwards. I'm sorry if this is ruining it. I don't know what else to do to this man. He obviously knows he's in control already. I've like lost it. I've lost it. I've lost it now. <laughs> don't be dramatic. I can see your condition is terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Uh, you got me, Harry. Yeah, just confuse him. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was... I'm afraid we're wasting our time, and I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some <laughs> questions pertaining to a murder investigation. <laughs> Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Is this Police chair still hurting questions. me? Um... Oh god, there's a lot of questions. Hold on, could I ask all of these? Uh, could you help me get a body down from the tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my! Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. You know, I came into this like, I'm going to be the... the the one control of this conversation is just funny to me that I've just totally lost it in like five minutes. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Uh... Yeah, you are com a community leader. Help out your help your community out. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Ooh. He picks up the handset of a radio phone to his right and then clicks a button. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. He's a great guy, but he has race science? What does that mean? Racism? Uh... <laughs> Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Wait, wait, wait. Important questions for first. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you, like I'm helping you with the body. 
I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. Say nothing. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. I have a feeling he's gonna walk, uh, talk around in circles. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, is that true? Are we door opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. Is it a door you're allowed in? An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar. Pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Ooh. Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss weasel. business with you. A weasel. He puts his glasses back on. I bet you don't even know anything about the hem. No, don't say that. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You He's look like, like you oh. could run around all day. Do I? I look like I'm half dead. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? He called him a weasel. Like, obviously, this guy is not trustworthy at all. I mean, I could accept the task, but not do it. But will Kim be upset? Uh, I think Kim would not like to do this, though. And... It matters to me what Kim thinks. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. A local bigwig. I know big -wig. everything that goes on in Martinez. Huh. I'll look into it. I wonder if, like, if I... So, my worry is that if I don't accept this, I won't be able to talk to the dock workers. He gave me a check. He buttered me up comically large check kim said kim said that this shows that he has where is it the police are working for you and then my drama said an excellent opportunity to lie to him to benefit myself i could tell him that i will do it pretend i've done it lie to him and i don't want to do this for him like i'm not gonna do it because i don't want to make it seem like like because kim said it will make it look like the we're basically in his pocket, right? But I wonder if I could just straight up lie to him. I'm hoping I can. Fantastic, my friend. That I'm really just hoping I can. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by Manana. the gates. Manana. Manana's like a free agent in the union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Another thing? Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Alright. I'm not gonna do it. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the... Kvalson Crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? 
Maybe that's the way to go about Ooh. opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. I really can convince the container to open itself? Okay. Because I saw that often. I thought I was just being crazy. Um, I met Joyce, the company represented. No, wait. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. Just be straight, straight out what? with it. Harry, <laughs> how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell with this guy. Honestly. <laughs> no, I'm not. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. I'm a friend. But you know what? He perks up. I trust you, like I trust all my friends. We're friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. I knew it. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Uh... Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? You called me Mr. Dubois, why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everett, I call you Harry. That's what the Hang of the Corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic <laughs> science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What yep. are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. My memory is fine, I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Is a dossier on me? Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. Mm. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. There might be nothing in it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? The lieutenant inspects Everard over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Oh my gosh, why are you being rude to Kim? Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Yeah. Do some probing first. Uh, where did you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha. You guys are so corrupt. That's terrible. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Uh, Kim suspects something. What kind of cop does it say I am? No, wait, wait, wait. Let's do this one because I have a 97% chance. I mean, unless I'm very unlucky. Have another look at that folder. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. Ooh, it's just another one of yeah. those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. That's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me. He was trying this to bluff me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? Let's waste more of his time. That means he doesn't really know anything about you. Ooh, he was bluffing. The pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois? Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and... 
effort. I'd rather find my own gun. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Uh... Could you really... Hold my... Wait, the gun may have been brought from Roy's pawn shop. Ooh. Could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to uh, do it. Really? But they said that a woman got it. Right? The pawn shop guy? He said that I pawned it. A woman got it. I said... I'm not going to tell him that. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun finding competition on our hands. Competition? Okay, he is gonna blackmail me. Uh, I'm looking into your shady brew. What is that? I don't know what that means, Harry. Neither do I. Shady I don't... brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. <laughs> He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. You know, I have no idea what I'm talking about either. Um, aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age. <laughs> I too am surprised by the resilience and athleticism of this, of this tool I've been provided with. Tap my chest. Yes, yes, Harry. You are obviously in <laughs> peak physical condition, and I salute both your initiative and your physical prowess. Very impressive, Harry. Very impressive. Very. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. So I've met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy. You I see. know. I hope you're getting along. One no. thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? We're all trying to do what's best for Martin A's here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I am helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. And with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. Ooh, what happened with the previous negotiator, Mr. Galmont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. Hmm. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Yeah, right. Harry! I have little oh, sorry. people you in my organization. Midget. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? <laughs> it's so mean. Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. <gasps> I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Uh, why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. I have to go back to Rich Lady. It's a fortress. He knows she can't get in here. Well, I got in here. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Uh -huh. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Funny Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. 
The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. This particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. You know, this guy, he's like really good at seeming really useless and pathetic and at the same time being incredibly manipulative and obviously showing his his weight of power very very scary interacting with him i mean we could tell him about i'm i'm, I'm gonna exhaust you know exhaust the dialogue evart joy seems to think the union is lowballing her yes yes lowballing of course this isn't a casino harry Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Okay, let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. Sure. I have no interest in what she is doing. But I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Uh -huh. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everard Ooh. doesn't mind. I like how he he listed things that are kind of like unimportant, like the clock, his brother's picture, but then also tell her about your your secrets like the lost gun it is That's so manipulative. interesting to tell people things about each other yeah. isn't it it was nice telling him about her right now it was it's it's dialogue all right everard i'm going to leave now but we might talk again later wait you need this to get in and out through the gate oh he pulls out a plastic card okay um great wouldn't want to get stuck in here yeah. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. You, sir. Can I walk through here? Oh, that's not a place to walk. Well, how do I get in and out of here? Like, the what's the proper way to get in and out of here? There's, I guess there was no other way to get out. I wonder if I can convince the container. How else are you supposed to get? How does he get it in out of there? I don't even know how I got in here other than jumping. Oh, wait. I can't. I think I failed this white check already. You're back before the cargo yeah. container. Oh, sorry. Nothing. Um. What's the proper way in and out of here? I think it's through there. That's the proper way in and out, right? This one? In case of strike, press button behind guard. Oh yeah, I made it up here. The Great Revishal Industrial Harbor. Oh, I can't talk about to those people. I can only talk to this guy. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. <laughs> Is this one? Measurehead's babe. Okay, let's ignore what they said. My body is unimportant. I'm with the police and I have police business with you. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Al Ghul. Al Ghul. 
His face contorts and disgusts as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Uh, I don't have a problem with Al Ghul. I just drink a little on the weekends. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Al Ghul. What is Al Ghul? You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remains. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. What? He's talking absolute nonsense. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? Idea. Is he a racist too? Are they all racists? Uh. That fat racist over there point to the racist Loriman. You're just him after pumping some iron. Look at my craniology. I am the pinnacle of my ablo coat. The pink blob is a bad example, even of yours. It saddens me. You were once a noble and powerful race. Oh my god, I can't talk about this. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. Why are we talking about this guy? You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness. And with frivolous pop culture. Okay. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah. You oh. know it. My god. Uh This the situation is serious. You probably have you your people have probably killed a man. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity. <laughs> by inviting the other races to a great world war. What is- I, I'm so confused by what he's talking Bring your about. Bring troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art and your microcephalic skulls. You could internalize Measurehead's race theory. It would enrich you rhetorically. Wouldn't that mean I have to become a Seminese supremacist myself? Well, not as such. What you do with a mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure, or accept them and become an advanced racist. Advanced racist? <laughs> I don't want to be an advanced racist. Don't be such an asshole to your fellow dock worker. Show him this stolen ID card. No. I, re I have one. Isn't Everard the union boss white? Uh, don't be vulgar. <laughs> white or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Uh, he turns his eye towards the harbor, seemingly bored with you. Yeah, but you still serve him. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Clare is a man of vision and memes. He has the will to confront international capital, which is something your race naivistic communists never did. Ah, uh, you like to cherry pick it. Okay. Also, okay. to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. My jam is a mysterious poor thing. It's called stardom, jam. baby. Individualism. 
You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? Uh, I've gotten it from disco, actually. Offshoots of the Zemini's people invented disco while of having did. sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Uh, okay. I'll ask, who are the Seminese? The South Island race. Haplogroup A4A. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian Archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Revachol? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. He is talking absolute nonsense. So you did not come from the islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. Oh my god, so you're not really Seminese, you're just from Revishal. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Revishal. The city is central to the Seminese strategy. Sure. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. Culture. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. Mm -hmm. You have extinction to come to terms with. Think upon it. This guy's Delulu. He's he's the, he's like lost in some world. I don't want to become a, a no thank you. Um, uh, Kim, what do you think about this? I think this racist is better than the last, but the <laughs> next racist will be the really good one. I think so too. That will be the. <laughs> Uh, that will be our lucky racist. He will grant us three wishes. <laughs> Your pedomorphic friend has requits. A protruding occiput and an indented zygomatic bone. The lieutenant does not flinch. You should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness does not render him a complete invalid. He still has the use of his mind. Oh my god, he's so annoying. Uh, why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. They're Their effeminate? company is spiritually degrading. You pick up on something artificial in his tone, like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him. He is usually more insane. Ah, there's more to it. What have you got against them? Mm -hmm. uh, fine. They have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics pen. Ah. It's shameful. What do you mean? Find I could use out this. for yourself. Endomorphic blob. How dare you call me an endomorphic blob? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, take, a, take that note down. We could use it to our advantage. Um... Okay, Ever told you to help us get the body down from the tree. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning and I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. Yeah. You're so noble, Measurehead. God. There's a but. What's the but? But 
While I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. What if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it on ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic haplogroup. He's gonna tamper with the body, isn't he? He... well, Kim can live with the compromise, so okay then, wait here while Measurehead goes. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. How long is it going to take you, though? Are you going to, like, make this quick? The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Why are you with Measurehead? Look at him. His craniometric perfection. Are you cops or what? Uh, yeah, we're the lot, no. We're just trying to keep things from going to shit. Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? I'm Katya, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Is he tearing down the tree? Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I also wish I could see it. Look at you! RCM Renta Cops! Guarding that bridge like Ebrot's lapdogs. Is this where it's at now? Uh oh. The RCM is for sale. Uh oh. And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? <laughs> Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? <laughs> That's none of your business. I want to know why his clothes are four sizes too small. The interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. Then the man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. Ooh, the okay. corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. Uh, there has been no side choosing. We did what we had to do to keep order. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. Ah, I hate that I did that, but okay, whatever. Alright. What are those tattoos of yours supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. He gestures towards the lorryman down the street. Welcome to Revershaw. You hear him yell at a redhead <laughs> woman visiting the fritter nearby. He must think redheads are immigrants. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the mean? trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. The drawings are precise and look true to their pseudo-scientific ambitions. One thing, however, it is not entirely free of throwbacks in the phylogenetic tree. His large jaw, for example, could be a trait indicative of criminalism. Huh. Also, his earlobes could be small. Oh, l let's let's do that. Your earlobes are too big. The size of the earlobes is not a real craniometric criteria. Everyone knows this. Your earlobes are flawless, Jean-Luc. Oh. Yes. Uh, are you sure? I mean, that jaw is clearly an atavistic stigmata that atavistic stigmata makes pussy say yes plenty <laughs> babe thanks but i got this uh, what the 
Okay, I, I'm sorry I asked those line of questions. Okay, eight, leave. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. Where? I'm reasonable? I'm a radical. Let's me, Mr. Yeah. I, I've been reasonable about this? Okay, yeah, that's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. The air suddenly feels calmer. More transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. Okay. First, where is this kingdom of conscious? conscience? It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. Mm, how do you bring about those circumstances? Incrementally. Oh. History's greatest catastrophes oh. have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place. Too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. Oh, here we go again. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. But what about all the things that are wrong now? Tisk tisk. Just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren might not. What rationality. What sang for? Wait, is the kingdom of conscience really about doing things or just preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? Hmm. Ooh. No. Then you've never lived through real chaos. Sometimes, in the face of great disaster, defending the status quo is progress. Okay, but what is the Kingdom of Conscious actually like? The Kingdom is difficult to comprehend, and even more difficult to describe. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The Kingdom of Conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Hmm. Living for the future. Okay. Well, I was told that I these I'm not locked into these. Like, I could just opt in and then just have them floating there. So, sounds incre incredible. Alonzi, let's go there right now to the future. Slow down, Mr. Oh. Reasonable. All right. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? All right, then let's get there eventually. That's right. <laughs> Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Rivershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, a long we are time. all going to be so much happier. An I ideal future, sometime in the future, not anytime soon, we will be happy. What's in here? Let me through. Hey, let me through. Your race Don't be such an asshole to your fellow dock worker. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's so save in case he kills me. Because he's a big man. Okay. Your race the sand. The Show him the idea. looks at you, silent and unmoving. His eyes burrow into the remnants of your soul. <laughs> you are mad, Santiago. Santiago is not you. Even the frenically impaired can see this. But I want to go here. Oh, I guess we can't. Okay. Fine. Let's... How many could I internalize? I have to unlock a new slot. I can unlock this. With one skill point. Confirm. I don't know what these mean, but I feel like I need to be a superstar. And I don't need my logic right now because I'm going back to that lady. 
Yeah. I'm going to be a superstar. I don't know what that means. But I'm going to go back to that lady and ask about, like, the, the thought or the reality check. Because I haven't done that. So I'll take an hour. Which is not too long. Wait, can I talk to this guy again? Right to work! I know. No more. Um, I still don't know who the Loriman is that's bad. Are you the bad Loriman? Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? Yeah, I've already asked him those. I don't know how to get the person. Get to like the like you did. You you are running the drugs because I don't think it's that guy. Oh, I forgot to get the key from Manana, but I'm I'm not gonna do that. What is this name? Oh, no, no, I was Harry Her Harry Dubois, right? Do I need to internalize that or something? Actual art degree? I want to get that next. I don't know why. Art cop. I want to be insufferable art cop. Okay, hold on. You're back. Um, Good. What can I help you with? Hmm. Tell me about Wild Pines. Is that, is that the line of questioning? Do. There was a touch of discomfort there. She... The Pines' core competency is legit. Wait, I've heard all of this. The Wild Pines group is one um, of the original Revacholian Indo tribes. I'm just going to skip through all of this until I get to the part where it, Son Baptiste, it is. Go ahead. We're where are Martinez. we? Martinez. Martinez, you would be excused for not knowing about it. Tell me more about this Martinez. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before as a teenager. Not a lot has changed. There are ruins. A terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. This place used to be a province, a workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its work. The reeds are the real star of the show here now. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. You mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol, and the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean, the world's largest body of water, the Insulindic. Known to the early River Sholians as Les Immensités Bleu, the Blue Immensities. And what's the name of this island? Caillou, as you already know. Imagine a pebble, a smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea, misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the River Esperance. We're in the delta of this river, on the sixth branch, the Martinez distributary. Okay, what's Martinez? What's Revachol? Revachol? Revachol is what you call a city. What kind of city is Revachol? A great kind. What makes Revachol great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Okay. Our part Ooh. in it, oh. at least. Our Ooh. centuries. Who built the city? The nations of the Occident, or migrant workers from Seminine and Il Mara, depending on your creed. When was Revachol built? In the DeLorean century. 380 years ago. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean, conflicts. Ideological conflicts. The stuff of men. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. Ah. Uh... So, we're pretty much at the center of the world? Oh, we're quite a way off. Oh. About? She points across the water where the skyscrapers rise. A collection of tall ghosts behind the water vapor. Light reflecting off their glass windows. 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government, Insulindian Mission Command. Look to the sea. Silence. She lowers her hand. The water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition. 
Only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Why are we... We are where we are. I have no truer answer to give, unfortunately. Derealization? This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory impaired partner has many more questions to ask about even more fundamental aspects of reality. Yep. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am Messier will be here later too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. But I want to know everything now. That is understandable. But perhaps it's better not to eat all your candy at once. Indeed. I'm always at your service. Did I get my lowdown? No, I want to ask it now. Where is it? Standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island, able to sustain up to 200 Okay, what if I say we're in an unimportant in place the of the of important the place? I think it's fair to say so. Martinez is about... A collection of tall ghosts behind the water vent. Oh, yeah, we heard that kilometers part. From Look to the sea. The water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition. Only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Where are we? We are where we are. I have no truer answer to give, unfortunately. She watches you closely as you scan the horizon. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Might I suggest not? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. Won't I be lazy if I don't do it all now? Oh, of course not. You are already diligent for getting this far. And diligent boys remember where they left off. Indeed. I'm always at your service. What, what else am I supposed to ask her? Let's try that again. Where are we? On a so we're basically on the periphery. Island. Basically nobody's. A collection. 22 kilo Silent. The water. It's basically the same the thing light. no matter what. There is no recognition. Only the immensity of the sea. And the cold radiating from it. Say nothing, observe the large body of water? She observes your eye. This is one thought you. Was there something. This has been. Might I suggest. Absolutely. My commitment here all is. Alright, you're right. It's better not to eat all your candy at. Indeed. Well, I guess I can. Of assistance. Okay. A little that I know. Anything else? On the contrary, officer. There are yet camioners you have not talked to. And don't look so surprised. In a time like this, it would be strange if Wild Pines didn't have eyes on the harbor. They must have someone in an overlook position near the gates. Oh, the guy sitting on the gate, probably. I suggest you go back and canvas for more suspects. Okay. By the way, I've talked to Everard, Everard Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Uh... Uh... It's not important if I liked him, I was doing my job. No, I'm the type of person to give my opinion, I think. <laughs> He's a beautiful man. Uh, I have a feeling the international community does not approve of him. I don't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? <gasps> or wait, actually. She answers her own question. Corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm like corruption verm. reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I am not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something how could i stop you are we not human oh I'm here she goes curious to hear another person's take it's only natural we would only be gossiping i love gossip intellectually speaking it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things <laughs> mr everett is helping me find my gun let's just i mean he knows shouldn't she know oh 
That's so helpful of him. I know. The lieutenant looks at you, and he can <laughs> swear his jaw muscle is trembling. Oh no! He's able to contain the anger and surprise. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this <laughs> to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Oh wow, he's covering for me. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? No. Well, maybe he's not as helpful as you thought then. Yep. Is there anything else? All right, I shouldn't have brought that up. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road? Don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? No, that's all for now. Um, let's see. I will talk to the man bulls guy and then we'll go back to the dark workers and talk to the guy hanging on the railing because I think that's who I should talk to about the lorry man with who is bring drugs around or in and out of Ravishal. Where's the man bulls guy? Oop, I had a thought. Where's my thought? Give me my thought. I don't have a thought. Are you the guy? Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? I found your guard booth. Yes, the Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. Ooh, he adds with a slight sigh. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. So who was working your shift that night? No one. No one? The booth has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday? Yes! It's... it's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officers. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. So it doesn't matter if you're there or not. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. He tries to argue. Evrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Okay, he's kind of helpful, but... I love it. Such dependency only weakens a man further. Do or die, there's no middle ground. Renee is but one man. We need a program. Yeah! Renee should rent out his services, invest the profit, get a few more guys, expand, repeat. Wage work is a dead end. Yeah! <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with Tar collecting its my side thing too. Proudly hold up. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'm trying to get the capitalist thing going on here. Rene should rent out his services, invest the profit, get a few more guys, expand, repeat, wage work is a dead end. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now? No, I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Uh, okay, got it, thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. I saw the statue of Felipe III near the roundabout. Ah, yes. King Philip III on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. Oh. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be 
under the leadership of a true king. How Someone should who a... knows how to rule. How should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Powerful leader is not afraid to do what must be done. Like entering the treasury to, to sleep on gold? I mean, sure, powerful leader is not afraid to do what must be done. That's what this country needs. Revishol would be a different place if more people realized that. We could still be the... Don't get started on that again. What, what happened, happened. There is some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. <laughs> Let's talk about this. What was that about the cocaine? Oh, Halt Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy. The nobility <laughs> loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> his egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? He asks, obviously annoyed. That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine. <laughs> for clarity of vision. To aid in their work. Okay, Regnum sure. cocainum. Revachal's finest years. Oh my gosh. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. Of course. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Philip III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor. Oh my and god. It is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of <laughs> course, he was able to connect with higher realms. What in the... He's just making excuses for the king's habits. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, I drink alcohol and go to heaven. Please, officer, don't encourage him. You spare us the cocaine fairy tales. The RCM isn't interested in them. Yes, indeed. We're not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. All right, let's talk about something else. Right. Oh, I'm going to try it. Because I can do it again. Uh, what, a, it is, uh, what is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? As Rene <gasps> turns from I made it. to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. How many medals are there? Two. The larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. Look at the cross. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The medal hangs from a blue-striped triangle. It's the Croix de Bravour, Cross of Valor. The cross was the highest battlefield decoration in Suzerain's armed forces, awarded for exceptional bravery in the line of duty, in service of King Frissel I. Look at the sun. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. The setting sun was a decoration used to distinguish seasoned combat veterans in service of King Frizzle the First during the revolution. Croix de Bravois and the setting sun point to his chest. Did you get them for... For bravery. He interjects. That's what I was gonna say. I'm sure. But I know this uniform's reputation. You are also wondering if I got this for raping women. Or killing babies. So did you? Honor is everything to me. He says with grim finality. That doesn't explain anything. Whoa. Sounds like you're about to open the gates of conversation. This huh. man will literally talk your ear off if you let him wander off to memory lane. Ah, uh, so what did you get the medals for? For doing my duty in the heat of battle. For looking my mortality in the eye. When men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shat themselves. He saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front line in his gown of velvet and gold. Saved a princeling? It was on the first months of the revolution here in Revachel. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisel thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. 
sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar, wearing a tunic of purple velvet and cockatoo feathers to battle. Even his rifle was <laughs> gold-plated, shown from five clicks away. Can you imagine the asininity? He really despises that Drisson fellow. <laughs> it's clear. Purple velvet tunic. Hmm. That isn't exactly camo. To keep the long and bloody story short, Drisson marched us against the partisans in Koron. And when I say march, I mean made us walk into captured enemy territory, single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. It must have been a blood path. I got shot in the left shoulder and went down. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Oh my god. Then his horse, driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. Okay, then what did you do? I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Then everything went black. Captain Arno, le fléau des chevaux. The bane of horses. When I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Joel Estresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. Um. <laughs> he seemed hesitant to die. Hmm. This would never happen to Johnny Lawjaw. Point to your own jaw. My jaw is tight. Right, right. So I grabbed the prick and started crawling. Kept going until the 59th Cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jealous freak convinced Frisell to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood. Peace and shit. He was the commanding officer and I was on duty. Just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the sun for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. Oh no, go ahead. He's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self-worth. Sounds like you're being modest, Rene. The old carabineer stands quietly like a statue. His features motionless. What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Drizon. Two days later, that was. Wow. And that even while crawling with a mangled half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Whoa. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but. Maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself. Whoa. Whoa. Hold on, you're just a little bit proud of Bernice heroics, aren't you? Sorry, officer, but you're reading me all wrong. I'm a man of peace, oh. and these kinds of bloody heroics are only impressive to men like Rene himself. Certainly not to me. I don't know. It sounds like he was. How did you find the story to be, officer? Quite impressive. It's men like Rene who made rubbish all great ones. I don't know. I mean, that was pretty badass. He carried the de half dead prince on his back while crawling, killed three people with a shattered leg and a bullet hole in his ch in his shoulder. Maybe, maybe, but also bear in mind, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. Sun-shaped one. What was that oh, one for? Oh no! You have to get shot. Repeatedly. And you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Yeah, he killed three people. Do not speak of what you know nothing about, Poltroon. Duty is something you will never understand. Why do you despise Dersant so much? Because he was a goddamn dandy! <laughs> had no business leading men or even being on the battlefield. All he was was related. I mean, he got his that entire it. squad killed. The troops that were with him, so that's pretty foolish. Royal blood alone doesn't make army commanders. He was a stupid kid, only interested in horses. 
hairstyles, and man-loving. And 782 <laughs> royal carabineers are dead because of his incompetence. Oh my god. 700? You got 700 people killed? I'd be pissed too. Oh, man-loving? Is that even a word? The man-loving is not the problem. It's getting 782 people killed. It is not. Thanks for the story, Renee. Ah, there were many such stories in those days. Many such men too. True Eversholians. Men with backbone. Oh yes, Rene, yes. Men were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Lord, please bring those days back, if you can. Girls are pretty and everyone was a fascia? What's that? I'm not getting into this with you again. <sighs> Officer, was there anything else? You should try to come up with a heroic story of your own. Oh, I should. Impress this old soldier. I should. Oh my gosh. Minus two for through the pool in the sea. I'm gonna try though. Rene told you his war story now. Impress him with your heroics. This is a red check though. This is a red check and it cannot be retried. I will come back with more drama. I will come back with more drama. Thank you for your time. I don't know, like, what other questions I need to ask her? I tried to get it, and it is like nothing. All of it ex is exhausted. Maybe something here will give me drama. And I don't know which one it would be. I want to internalize this next. But yeah. This is where we will leave it. When we come back the next episode, I will go back and investigate the Loriman. I think it's that guy that's sitting on the railing. So, um, yeah. Until then, guys, take care.